For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? And Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 5913 as amended. Clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 5913, a bill to create an independent advisory panel to comprehensively assess the management structure and capabilities related to the Department of Homeland Security and make recommendations to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the management of the, de of the department. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. McCall, and the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Thompson, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the bill under consideration. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of the DHS Accountability Act of 2012. Congress has an important opportunity to make the Department of Homeland Security a more effective and efficient organization. The purpose of this bipartisan legislation is to create an independent advisory panel to conduct a top-to-bottom examination of deficiencies in the Department's man management structure and capabilities. It follows six subcommittee oversight hearings examining corruption, low morale, inefficiency, and waste of taxpayer dollars, and it comes almost 10 years since the inception of DHS. I appreciate the strong support of the ranking member of the Homeland Security Oversight Subcommittee, the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Keating, as an original co-sponsor of this bill. As the third largest federal department, DHS has more than 240,000 employees and an annual, annual budget of $60 billion. Its transformation, according to the GAO, is critical to achieving its Homeland Security mission. However, excessive bureaucracy, waste, ineffectiveness, lack of transparency have hindered its operations and wasted taxpayer dollars. Mismanagement at the department is a threat of the security of our homeland. Since 2003, GAO has designated the transformation of DHS as high risk because the department had to transform 22 agencies, several with major management challenges, into one department, and failure to effectively address the department's management risks could have serious consequences. DHS remains on GAO's high-risk list. While GAO has conducted numerous audits of specific DHS programs, a comprehensive management assessment of the department has yet to be conducted. Our hearings and GAO findings <clears throat> conclude that DHS has made some progress, but is still dysfunctional in several areas. The department continues to face challenges in acquisition management, human capital, integration of financial data, and IT. In August, my subcommittee released a report outline, outlining how the department's management failures related to a variety of acquisition programs have wasted taxpayer dollars and had a serious impact on our ability to protect the homeland. The report's findings show how, why such a panel is needed to help fix the department's shortcomings. GAO's recent work also identified areas of duplicative effort. For instance, GAO found agencies are paying for risk assessments that are not being completed while simultaneously conducting their own assessments. Employee morale also remains one of the lowest in the federal government. Additionally, there are examples of Border Patrol agents accepting bribes theft by airport screeners and immigration officers complicit in fraud. These deficiencies cannot continue. Based on the findings of these hearings and GAO reviews, I have doubts that the department can carry out its core mission of protecting the homeland if the problems persist. These issues of corruption, waste, duplication, and abuse of power are all symptomatic of deeply rooted flaws in the department's management. I believe it will take a dedicated team of independent investigators to identify the root causes and recommended cha concrete changes. A top-to-bottom management review is necessary because the current management team is not getting the job done. The DHS Accountability Act of 2012, as amended, will create an independent eight-member advisory panel appointed by the legislative and executive branches to comprehensively assess DHS management structure and capabilities. It will require the panel to make recommendations to improve DHS's 
efficiency and effectiveness and it will require an interim report sent to Congress one year after panel's selection with a final report due two years after its inception. The panel will possess subpoena power and the authority to conduct hearings and receive expert witness testimony. The panel's recommendations will help make DHS a leaner, smarter, and more effective organization and ferret out duplicative programs and offices. Fellow members, this legislation is our opportunity to take action, and I urge you to support the DHS Accountability Act of 2012. With that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves his time. Gentleman from Mississippi. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of H.R. 5913, the DHS Accountability Act of 2012, and yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the bill before the House today would create an independent advisory panel to comprehensively assess and make recommendations regarding the management structure and capabilities of the Department of Homeland Security. While there is some question about whether this legislation is necessary, as similar independent initiatives are already underway, I appreciate the effort to improve the effectiveness of DHS's management and will not approve the bill. Uh, with that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Time is reserved. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I have no further speakers. I urge members to support this bill. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back his time. Gentleman from Mississippi. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield three minutes to the ranking member of the Committee on Homeland Security, Subcommittee on Oversight, Investigations, and Management, the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Keating. Gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Ranking Member Thompson, for yielding your time and for your leadership on the Homeland Security Committee. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of H.R. 5913, the Department of Homeland Security Accountability Act of 2012. As the Ranking Member for the Subcommittee on Oversight, Investigation and Management, I was pleased to work with Chairman McCall and serve as the original co-sponsor of this measure. I appreciate the bipartisan discussions that led to the introduction of the amended version we adopted at the subcommittee level, which is the version being considered today. This bill goes to the heart of the subcommittee's mandate, and that is ensuring the effective management of the Department of Homeland Security. Ensuring that effectiveness uh, for the Department of Homeland Security is not a partisan matter and should serve as a priority as it is essential to our security and safety in this country. Since its inception, the Department of Homeland Security has faced significant management challenges, many of which stem from the very nature of its creation, which uh, was transforming 22 legacy agencies into one attempted cohesive unified department. To its credit, the department has come a long way since its inception, but more work remains to be done. The consideration of this bill comes at a time when Congress is examining cost-saving and revenue-generating measures to reduce our deficit while ensuring the safety and well-being of our citizens. There's no doubt that the Department is making positive strides and having clear plans in place to reduce duplicative efforts in the management area. For example, the Department's Efficiency Review Initiative, which is highlighted by Vice President Biden as the model for all federal agencies, has resulted in more than a billion dollars in DHS cost avoidance, including $180 million saved by consolidating duplicative software licensing agreements. And I'm pleased that the Secretary has advanced internal measures aimed at eliminating waste and fraud. Uh, unfortunately, this does not change the fact that the number of DHS activities are still shared by other federal agencies. In March of 2011 and February 2012, GAO identified six areas uh, across DHS where overlap or potential unnecessary duplication exists. For example, when it comes to personnel background investigations, cybersecurity trainings, and the identification of fraudulent travel documents, the lines between multiple agencies remain blurred. Furthermore, despite its management strides, the Department has yet to fully address deficiencies in component operations that resulted in wasting of funds. The Department's Federal Protective Service has received over $230 million from federal agencies for risk assessment and security service. Yet these agencies have not found the FPS's services adequate or satisfactory. So they perform their own assessments as well. This bill will determine instances of waste and abuse through an independent advisory panel that will be charged with two main responsibilities to comprehensively access the management structure and capabilities related to the department and to make recommendations to improve the efficiency and effectiveness 
of the management of the department. The legislation instructs the panel to examine five broad categories. The efficiency and effectiveness of management structure and capabilities, whether unnecessary duplication exists, the extent to which management of key homeland security missions is centralized waste and duplication. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, this bipartisan uh, effort uh, will compromise this panel's work uh, through the course of this session, which has been extensive. I want to thank uh, Chairman McCall for his efforts uh, at dealing with these issues. Uh, I want to thank for the bipartisan cooperation that's there on important issues of national security. And I want to thank the ranking member for yielding his time and his leadership on the committee. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back his time. Does the gentleman from Mississippi yield back the balance of his time? Uh, I yield back, and I am prepared to close. Texas, the gentleman from Texas has yielded back his time. Oh. Does the gentleman from Mississippi yield well, back his time? Uh, then I'm prepared to close, Mr. Speaker, by saying Let me I, I'm in support of this legislation, and uh, I look forward to its adoption. I gentleman, yield back. gentleman yields back his time. Question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill? H.R. 5913 as amended. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move that the uh, House suspend the rules and concur in the Senate amendment to H.R. 915. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 915, an act to establish a Border Enforcement Security Task Force program to enhance border security by fostering coordin coordinated efforts among federal, state, and local border and law enforcement officials to protect United States border cities and communities from transnational crime, including violence associated with drug trafficking, arms smuggling, illegal alien trafficking and smuggling, violence and kidnapping along and across the international borders of the United States and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. McCall, and the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Thompson, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the bill under consideration. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 915, the Jaime Zapata Border Enforcement Security Task Force Act. This bill, which will codify additional border enforcement security task force units, was named to honor the memory of slain immigration and customs enforcement special agent Jaime Zapata. In 2011, Special Agent Zapata and his associate Special Agent Victor Avila were ambushed on a dangerous stretch of highway in Mexico by the ruthless Zeta drug cartel. The vehicle that the two special agents were traveling in was forced off the road by the heavily armed thugs. Once the vehicle had come to a stop, the cartel members forced the doors open, fired their weapons at point blank range, and tried to drag away special agent Zapata, who fought back and was able to relock the doors. Special Agent Zapata tried to explain to the men that he and Special Agent Avila were U.S. diplomats. The gunman responded to his plea with bullets. Special Agent Zapata then heroically drove himself and Special Agent Avila away from the scene and to safety. Investigators later found that more than 80 individual bullet casings at the scene of the crime. By nothing short of a miracle, Special Agent Avila survived the ordeal. However, Jaime Zapata did not. Border Enforcement Security Task Force units are comprised of DHS and other federal, state, and local law enforcement personnel and coordinate efforts to enhance border security and mitigate threats posed by transnational crime, drug trafficking, arms smuggling, illegal alien traffic, violence, and kidnappings. These units will leverage <clears throat> the experience of personnel from the United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the United States Customs and Border Protection, the United States Coast Guard, and other DHS components, as well as other federal agencies, state, local, and tribal, and when appropriate, foreign law partners. With the increasing violence in Mexico and the growing resourcefulness of the vast criminal networks operating along the border, this type of interagency response is critical. The men and women who have selflessly dedicated themselves to protecting our borders deserve this protection. 
Jaime Zapata paid the ultimate price, and I've made it a personal mission, along with my colleague, Mr. Cuellar from Texas, to help ensure no more brave men and women are lost to violence along our southwest border. In addition to drug cartels freely moving across the border with drugs, cash, and weapons, the growing presence of Iran and Hezbollah in Latin America are also a threat. We do not have the luxury of sitting by idly while those looking to do us harm continue to enter the United States illegally. I'd like to thank my friend again, colleague Representative Cuellar, for introducing this vitally important piece of bipartisan legislation. And I'd also like to thank uh, Senators Lieberman and Collins for taking action on this bill. H.R. 915 honors Special Agent Jaime Zapata by making sure that those who serve, as he did, have the tools they need to secure the border. And I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman's time is reserved. Gentleman from Mississippi. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the Senate Amendment to H.R. 915, the Jaime Zapata Border Enforcement Security Task Force Act, and yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the underlying bill before the House today would, for the first time, statutorily authorize an important border security program, the BEST program. On the BEST, ICE partners with federal, state, local, and foreign law enforcement counterparts to establish targeted cross-agency teams to identify, disrupt, and dismantle criminal organizations posing significant threats to border security. The program also serves as a model for interagency cooperation, coordination, and information sharing, which is vital in the post-9-11 environment. I would note that it is appropriate that this bill is named in the memory of Jaime Zapata, an ICE special agent who was killed in the line of duty in Mexico while working as part of a BEST team. H.R. 915 has enjoyed strong bipartisan support in the House, passing with overwhelming support earlier this year, as well as in the Senate. Passage today will clear the bill for the President's signature. I would like to commend the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Cuellar, for his continued work on this important legislation and being the sponsor of this legislation. The Committee on Homeland Security and Congress as a whole benefits from his commitment to border security matters. With that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman's time is reserved. Gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I have no more speakers. If the gentleman from Mississippi has no further speakers, I'm prepared to close. Gentleman reserves his time. I do reserve my time. Gentleman from Mississippi. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield such time as he may consume to the author of the underlying measure being considered the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Cuellar. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you um, uh, to the ranking member, Mr. Thompson, for the uh, leadership that you have provided on this piece of legislation and other uh, legislation that is so important for the security of our nation. Certainly want to thank also Chairman uh, Peter King also, uh, and of course my good friend uh, Michael McCallum, uh, Chairman McCallum, uh, for being one of the original co-sponsors along with uh, Blake Farenthold. And we look forward to working with the, uh, with the folks on the border, including a new member from uh, the Brownsville area, Mr. Philemon Vela, uh, that uh, McCall and I, myself have always worked in a very bipartisan way. Uh, the Jaime Zapata bill, this 915 uh, bill, has received uh, bipartisan support. Uh, in May, when it was first passed by the House, it was uh, overwhelmingly uh, supported by the House. Both Democrats and Republicans went over to the Senate. And certainly, I want to thank also uh, Senator Liberman and Senator Collins uh, for the support of this bill. Senator Liberman was just outstanding in making sure that we move this bill over here as quickly as possible. Uh, and we now have a bill here that does two things. First thing, enhance border security. Uh, and number two is to name this particular bill in honor of a brave individual, uh, that uh, Jaime Zapata, that has just uh, has given up his life. I know that uh, some months ago, both uh, Chairman McCall and I had the opportunity uh, to meet with the family, uh, with the mother and father of uh, this strong hero that we uh, got to uh, 
uh, know uh, in the service of the line of duty. As you know, uh, ICE, uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, in partnership with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, as well with other federal and state, local, and, and foreign law enforcement, has created this best initiative. Uh, by the way, the first best initiative was created in Laredo uh, back in 2005, uh, and it's become a model uh, across the, uh, the country. And this is a comprehensive approach to identify, disrupt, dismantle transnational criminal organizations that have posed significant threats to the border and maritime security. Uh, through investigations, seizures of contraband, arrests, prosecutions, the best units are building an impressive record of success. Today, there are 34 best units throughout the United States. Uh, they work not only with the Mexican counterparts, uh, but on the northern part with the Canadian uh, counterparts. And certainly, we want to make sure that Congress provides the best support, uh, the support to the best units in, in order to enhance border securities and, of course, the communities that we have, uh, that we all represent. So again, uh, members, I would ask uh, that you all uh, work and support this bill. And today, a very appropriate time, uh, we had the new uh, president-elect of Mexico that came down here, met with members of Congress, and I believe at this particular time he's meeting with the uh, president right now, President Barack Obama. And we look forward to working with our Mexican counterparts to man make sure that we keep in mind that a secure, a strong, prosperous Mexico is in the best interest of the United States. Mexico is not an enemy, but it is a friend of the United States, and I think both uh, Benny Thompson has been down to the border and Michael McCall has been down to the border. We understand that the Rio Bravo, the Rio Grande, does not divide us as two countries, but unites us together. So uh, uh, also to the family uh, of uh, Jaime Zapata, uh, losing a son is very, very difficult. And, and again, we want to thank the family uh, for providing uh, this strong hero that we can say Jaime Zapata was truly a hero of the United States. So, members, I urge all my colleagues to support this bill by voting aye on H.R. 915. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. It goes back his time. Gentleman from Texas has uh, uh, announced that he's prepared to close in reserve. Gentleman from Mississippi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to support the Senate amendment to H.R. 915 and yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back his time. Gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just on a point of personal privilege, I know Mr. Cuellar and I are, uh, will be embarking uh, at the end of this week to head down to Mexico City to the President of Mexico's inaugural inauguration. Uh, and I agree with my colleague that our relationship with Mexico is vitally important. Um, and the idea that the best teams, border enforcement security teams, have provided an invaluable service on the border in terms of confiscating cash and weapons going south into Mexico. Um, they have been extremely successful, and if anything merits additional resources, it's, it's this program. And I can't think of a better program to name after Jaime Zapata. I will also say on the several occasions I've met with Agent Avila and his family, uh, it's been very emotional uh, to see someone who's come back almost from a operation of war, if you will, who's been shot at by the Los Zetas cartel members, almost going through a PSTD type situation. Uh, a very, very emotional experience. And I wish Agent Avila and his family the best in their recovery. A, a very brave, brave man and a soldier. Uh, and also to the family of Jaime Zapata, uh, we honor you today with this bill uh, and know that you are always uh, in our thoughts and in our prayers. And then with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and concur in the Senate amendment to H.R. 915? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. From Texas. I, I demand the yeas and the nays. The yeas and nays have requested all those uh, in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise, sufficient number having risen. The yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20 and the Chair's prior announcement, further proceedings on this motion will be postponed.